My name is Dantez Akram. I'm a 23-year-old entrepreneur from Cleveland, Ohio, father, hustler, two-time six-figure business owner, and as well as a seven-figure business owner. I own the number one clothing brand server in the world, Limitless Investments. Come check us out. It's your boy underscore the real test. I'm here with some of the biggest clothing brand owners in the damn world, man. Stop playing with us. Um, but I'm gonna let them go ahead and give themselves their own introduction. Um, but again, it's your boy Dantez Akram, the owner of One Love Clothing and Limitless Investments. Um, I'm gonna give y'all a chance to go ahead and introduce yourself. So we're gonna start off um, on this side. Go ahead, my bro. Uh, first. Oh, ladies first, actually. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm Caleb Perilla, I'm a seven figure business owner, I'm the owner of Kings Play Apparel, and I'm also a mentor and an educator as well. Justin Phillips, owner brand called Support Black Colleges. Hollywood Shack, owner of Hollywood Hideout. Sharif Gordon, owner of Soap Show. So what I did to, what I did today is basically I brought all the biggest clothing brand owners that I've personally been able to connect with um, into one YouTube video where we're gonna give y'all as much game as possible in about 30 to 45 minutes. So hopefully you are ready. Make sure you grab like a pen and paper and make sure you just take some notes. Y'all gonna hear a little bit of our stories as well, things that we've been through so y'all can understand that, you know, you're gonna go through some trials and tribulations throughout your journey. But at the end of the day, we just want you to take something away from this. So make sure y'all follow us all on the social media. It's gonna all be in the uh, description below. Make sure y'all subscribe, follow us on all of our platforms. Y'all shop all of the different brands. The links will be down below. But real quick, now that we're about to jump into this, can y'all just give a little bit of background on like y'all brand and how y'all got into it? And we start off with Kayla since she's the only girl here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I started with my brand when I was like 19, I think, around 18, 19 years old. Um, I'm from Miami, and uh, I basically started my business when I was in high school. Um, no, after high school, actually. And then uh, now I'm just doing my business, and I'm also mentoring and educating others as well. Yeah, so I started uh, Support by College, and it was in uh, 2012 when we started. Um, 20, so we did like six years on and off, and then I really got involved in 2018. So over the past four years, we like really started taking it seriously. So story kind of goes, I was going to, uh, I was at the barber shop, it was obviously a long time ago, because I got a lot of hair now. But <laughs> I, was, I was getting a haircut, my barber asked me where I was going to school at, and I told him that I was thinking about going to Howard, Baylor, or University of North Texas, and he said, go to Howard. So I was like, all right, cool. And I didn't know anything about it. I got there, Howard kind of changed my life, being around a lot of black people that were uh, at, getting a higher, pursuing a higher education. And then I realized that I was the first person in my family to go to school, uh, go to college. And then I was like, there needs to be more awareness on HBCUs. So we started the brand that way. It's fire, it's fire. It's kind of hard to follow up. <laughs> uh, I started my brand last summer, and uh, really I just started because I got a you know love for fashion. I always been to clothes, so I was like, let me just start my own brand. And a year later, here we go. It's going pretty good. That's good. Can't really get no story. Like <laughs> <laughs> I want to get one. Like, yeah. <laughs> So for me, it was like mid-pandemic in 2020, and I was just kind of lost in life. Um, I lost my job and everything. The, the words so children just popped in my head one day. I'm like, I got to run with this some way, somehow. So I just came up with a brand that way. And for y'all who don't know me, um, I started off selling new rags out of my out of my trunk in Mount Pollard in Cleveland. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I turned it into a six-figure brand and used everything that I learned to create a clothing brand, One Love Clothing. Give my daughter 50% ownership and just been scaling it and handling trials and tribulations as I've been going. So um, again, my main thing is teaching people about clothing brands, how to get into the space, how to elevate in the space, how to educate others in that space as well. So um, again, this is why I wanted to bring the best of the best to the showroom floor so we can actually educate you guys on things that is definitely required when you're getting into the clothing brand space. So real quick, since there's so many of us in here, um, I don't want to take up too much of y'all time when y'all watching this video, but can y'all give one tip to a person, a new entrepreneur that's trying to get into the clothing brand space, they're facing fears, they don't know really well where to start, like what tip would you give them? Um, like one, one tip that you would give them? Um, personally, I would probably say um, definitely be consistent, but also just start the business, you know, just start. Like a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to start. You know, there's a lot of ways you can find tips on how to start, either like me, Dante, said, anybody that has a clothing brand that actually gives out tips, you know, we give up those tips for a reason, you know, and at the end of the day, it's just like all you gotta do is just start the brand. Like, it's like 
you're gonna waste time procrastinating when you could just start. That's me. Just start. That's good. Uh, for me, I always like whenever someone asks me that question, I always go back to self awareness because like I've been through so much, you know, in the business, like going from nothing to having like thirty employees and like then going back to three employees and just so much going on. So um, my biggest thing is self awareness because. In this industry, there's so many ways to make money. You can do print on demand, drop shipping, third, uh, you know, third party logistics companies. There's so many ways to do it. So the thing that people get wrong, in my opinion, is they try to build a, a lifestyle around their business rather than building a business around their lifestyle. So my biggest tip is always like figure out who you are, what type of person and entrepreneur you want to be, and then build your business around your lifestyle rather than doing it backwards. Because that's like probably where most of the pain in this industry comes from, to be honest. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, man. Yeah, switch the rotation. <laughs> 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 uh, I would say probably find some type of motivation or uh, some influence, something that you look up to uh, is very necessary. You know, someone that already is doing the path that you want to go on. You know, just to study, they come up, you know, soak up as much YouTube and uh, videos as possible. Just getting out of what you're really trying to do, pretty much. Yeah, and I'm heavy on confidence. Like, if you don't have the confidence to do things, like Shaq said, you can go on YouTube, it's a whole bunch of self confidence videos and things of that nature on there. But definitely, you gotta have that confidence because there's gonna be people, you know, who try to deter you and steer you off your path, but you gotta stay down, stay confident. I think number one tip I could give you is just stay in your lane. Um, you're going to have different situations where you're following all of us. And what's going to happen is, is you're going to get conflicted on your journey because you're watching so many of us and we're all moving at a different pace. Right. So what's going to happen is, is your confliction within yourself, you're going to start thinking, like, I need to be doing what Kayla's doing or what Justin doing or what Shaq doing or what Sharif doing. But you're not paying attention to what you need to be doing. So you're trying to move at an accelerated pace when it took us years to get here. Like, real quick, like, how long have y'all been in the clothing brand space, just so they know? Um, maybe going on four years. Yeah. Just, just hit 10. I've been here four years. <laughs> <laughs> Two years, <laughs> so, year, man. Right, and I'm, I'm just like two years, two and a half years in now. So as y'all can see, we all have at least a year or two plus experience in this game. So don't move too fast trying to keep up with us because at the end of the day, we're just here to educate you. You take the tips, you follow us on social media, you get influenced, you get inspired by it, but don't start getting jealous at the pace that we're moving at because it took us years and we had to earn our stripes in this game as well, the same way that you will, right? So we're going to actually switch up the rotation as well. So we're going to constantly switch this motherfucker up because I don't want my boy Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick man can y'all give us a, a a quick tip or not even a tip but a failure that you endured starting off with sharif uh what's one big failure that you endured throughout your journey because again this shit is not always gold and glitter right it's not always rainbows and, and sunshine so i want y'all to hear a little bit of that opposite side of things that we've been through so y'all can understand that again there's going to be things that you go through throughout your journey so sharif start us off bro so i was definitely in phase last year where i was trying to rush things a lot and I took out a uh, Shopify capital loan for like 17000 I did not need it at all. I, I didn't take it out with a plan. That's another thing. If you're going to take out a loan or anything of that nature, make sure you have a plan, please. But yeah, I did that. And then fast forward to the month after that, I had the biggest month ever. I didn't even need the loan. So I was able to pay the loan off in three months, but I didn't really need it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest failures I had probably was money management. Uh, I would say it was probably the most important, if not the most important. Uh, you definitely gotta learn some type of financial literacy because when I first started getting them checks from Shopify <laughs> every Tuesday, big crazy number, you think it's here to stay, but it's not. The goal is not how much you make, it's how much you can keep. When you check it, when you check it, hey man. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kayla. Let's see one of your biggest failures. One of my biggest failures, I would say, is making clothes that only I liked. You know, not getting the opinions of my my customers. Because I, like everyone needs to, I mean, I'm pretty much making clothes for other people, not myself. So I, I, made, I remember I made a design, and I was the only person that liked it. I never asked nobody. I never got opinions on it or anything, and it didn't sell for like a whole year. It was sitting in 
like my house just sitting there like I didn't get no opinions nothing and the only way that it sold is because I went viral on Twitter and it's like they're like oh you're sold out of everything let me just buy this to support I'm like sheesh thank god like <laughs> that was there for a whole year kind of thing I was it was bad so yeah yeah oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um probably the, the biggest failure was like uh having having an idea of what a CEO was and displaying that like on social media and whatnot because I think that a lot of big misconception out there is like people put CEO or founder you know in their bio on Instagram and they think that that deems them qualified to be a CEO and um, you know when you look at big companies like Tesla, PayPal, Uber, like you're talking about CEOs of companies that are running multi-billion dollar businesses and I'm sure we all have those types of aspirations, but we don't necessarily have those skill sets when we tell people that we're CEOs and founders. So one of the biggest failures I had was like doing things too fast, hiring too fast. Um, you know, at one point we got to like 30 employees, ran out of money, and then I had to take everybody to the back of the warehouse. And I was like, hey, we have no money. So like everybody that's in here, if you believe in me as an entrepreneur, then stay. And if you don't, then I would completely understand if you leave. And then everybody left except for three people. And then after that, you've got to build that like resilience and the grit to like really double down on what you got going on. So then, um, then after that, I realized that it's not enough to just call yourself a CEO or a founder. You really have to build leadership tactics. You have to really build grit, resilience. There's like so many different things. Like you can't read a PL, do your own balance sheet. Like there's so many different things. So well, I guess for me, like the biggest failure was just like really thinking that I was qualified to call myself a CEO when I really wasn't. And it was a very humbling experience. So yeah. I'm starting to see how you feel. I think one of my biggest failures is uh, not keeping momentum going and buying a lot of inventory and expecting things to just go just because they went previously. Um, and I think, again, keeping that momentum going is probably one of the biggest things. And we'll get into that as the next question. But for me, what I realized is, you know, when I dropped and, I, you know, during my first couple months of just being a clothing brand owner, like the sales were so crazy that I thought, oh, it's going to be like this forever. And you're going to hit that moment where you're doing crazy numbers and it starts going sideways and then you start taking that dip. And at that dip, you start have to, you, you like, you have to start being creative. You have to start being different with your content. You have to be different with your strategies. And again, I looked up to a lot of them and just started watching their content and started understanding like, okay, what are the things that they're doing? Everybody's transitioning to TikTok. All right. So why the hell are you still posting pictures on Instagram when you know they're not working? Right. Or just having solo photo shoots and not recording the content. Like you just have to start being creative and start looking at other people who are being innovators so it can like inspire you to actually go out and be like okay well they're starting to do these things what can I do that's different in the market right because at the end of the day your brand will stand out when you start understanding the entire marketplace everybody loves dressing in here right like everybody loves having the brand or having their shit worn right but you as a person have to understand that momentum is important for your brand because again you start thinking that your sales is going to be consistent all the time what happens when ads start slowing down what happens when your organic reach starts slowing down what happens when your page gets taken down like what do you do at that point right so you always have to have a, a plan b a plan c and a plan d and um that's why i always say like you got to stay prepared for any time that might come right so actually to extend into that right what would y'all say is the best way to keep momentum going for a brand so if somebody's starting and they starting to see some some traction maybe they just had a pre-order and they did you know a couple thousand dollars and they want to keep it going what tips would you give them to keep the momentum going and we'll start off with shaq well, to start off, uh, once you're doing pre-orders, I would say the, the most important thing about pre-orders is making sure your customers will return, especially if it's like your first drop or their first time shopping. You know, you're doing a pre-order, they, they really don't trust you already. Mm -hmm. So in order to keep that customer, you know, as a returning customer, you got to keep up with communication, making sure that if you're doing a pre-order, you discount something. If the shipping, if you can offer that for free, do that. But uh, as far as momentum, and you just gotta have the love for the product more than the love for the money because uh, that's like the yeah. smartest moment of push for me. Mm -hmm. Just lo loving seeing people in my product versus loving seeing them pay for it. That's a bar. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, sure. sure. For me, it'd be to uh, just remain level headed. Like Shaq said, it's easy to get a big head when you get a lot of money. 
for remaining level-headed is definitely a way to stay down, stay consistent for sure. Right. Um, yeah, it really is easy to just kind of get a little lazy after you got like a lot of money probably in sales. You kind of feel like, man, it's going to be like this forever. And I know when my sales like either drop or whatever take a turn, like that just wakes me up to just, I find out what the problem is and I just go fix it immediately. And how I keep that momentum is I always have samples in my back pocket like all the time because it's like, hey, if this, if I have no inventory, or I ran out of ideas, at least I have these samples to preview. Like if you follow my Instagram, my business page, I'm always previewing like new samples just to keep people like, oh, when did that even drop, you feel me? So that's what I do. I just have samples in my back pocket so people are always looking for the next product. You know, they're not just saying, okay, like they haven't posted in like two months. You know, like are they even still a brand kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I keep my momentum. That's cool. Uh, for me, the, the way that I keep momentum is like being uh, super prepared. So I think that the issue that I faced before was you think that it's just as easy as I make a design and it comes and I release it. But in reality, you don't realize truly how long that it takes for something to be released. You have to come up with the idea, pick how many SKUs you want in it, you have to get it designed, you have to redo the design, then you have to get the sample, the sample's gonna be wrong, you gotta get the sample right, then it has to come in, then you have to store it in the warehouse, count it. So all of these things we, we think happen way faster than they actually do. So the way that you keep momentum is knowing how truly how long your process actually takes and then making sure that you have a schedule that fits into your process that, so that you know that if I want to drop a product right now, it's going to take me 75 days realistically rather than just saying, hey, I want to do something and then it never happens because you don't know truly what it takes to make it happen anyways. So I would definitely say one of the biggest ways for me um, to keep momentum moving and, and constantly moving is number one just having like she said a vault of different designs and things ready to go but number two i would say the same thing but on the content side as well because i think a lot of people what happens is is you do one photo shoot you see a little momentum from the photo shoot but you forget that once you start seeing it you got to keep moving like you like there is no slowing down and that was something that i ran into because again i was running ads and th back then ad costs were so low like my conversions I was getting sales like it was nothing. Like I was waking up, you know, a couple thousand and I didn't have to worry about the day. And then you hit a moment like we're in now where every person and a mom and a dog is running Facebook ads or Google ads or TikTok ads. And although some other platforms are better than others like TikTok ads, right? So that's a gem for you. you. Start utilizing TikTok ads a lot more, right? But with Facebook ads, there's a lot more users on there, right? And a lot more people are understanding how to use it. But not only just that, there's a lot more money and liquidity going throughout of the entire advertising you know space so what's going on is there's a lot of people spending money and if you're spending a smaller amount they're not going to give you all the reach or all the attraction to your your ad they're going to give it to the people who are spending the most money which is obvious right so i would definitely say have content in the vault have designs in the vault like she said and then the last thing i would say is just you know one thing you can do is just be self-aware and understand that all right things are slowing down and that should that alone, like she said, when your numbers start, you know, plateauing or you start seeing a little dip, the best thing you can do is just be like, wake your ass up. Let me get back to work because at the end of the day, I'm not about to lose this. And if this is your only stream of income, there is no way that you can like just let that shit slow down. Right. So for me, it's, it's different because I have so many streams of income. I have, you know, multiple. So it's like if one slows down, there's always another one to pick up the pace. Right. But at the end of the day, still, you don't want things to slow down to the point where it dies off completely. Right. So the next big tip or the next big question that I have for y'all, because y'all have been in the clothing brand space for a while. Y'all all have seen success. How do you manage the money coming in? Because we're all under 30. So how do you manage the money that's coming in now? And if you had a situation where you couldn't manage the money or a, a situation happened and you just don't happen to notice, like, oh, shit, like finance is getting low. Like, what did you do to recover to get back to uh, get back on your feet? So uh, we'll start off on your side. Oh, um, yeah. So now, uh, after many conversations with very good accountants, I learned how to like manage money properly, or at least what I think is properly. So now every dollar that hits the account, 35% of it is immediately put into a tax account. You just don't even think about it because no matter what, you're gonna be somewhere within that tax bracket anyways. Then after that, I have like, now with the money that's left over from that, I create like a new 100%. And I take 5% of that just for me to live off of personally. 10% of it is to go to savings, 10% going to give, and the other 75 is to invest. So whether it be back in the business, crypto, real estate, whatever you want, um, that's just kind of how we break it up. And everything is uh, 
everything that we do with the business has its own card, so you don't mix and mingle your finances. So, Jen? Yeah, so um, same thing for me, kind of. I have like, you know, separated for taxes. I mean, I've always been good at money management. I've never had a time in my business where I just like spent too much money like on like nonsense. I know when like like Hollywood said when checks come in, it's like really, really good. Like you just want to spend it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> only time I really like spend, spend is when it's my birthday. That's the only time. Other time I, I mostly put away for taxes, I save for investments, etc. Um but it's like when you have a business it's like you have to spend money because you for your taxes, but I'm only like one person, so um I'm pretty much just saving for investments like real estate, etc. And uh that's pretty much how I manage my money. Dope, Jack. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same exact way. That's <laughs> pretty much how you put it. Uh, my account told me about the same thing about putting up for the taxi part. So I started doing that part and everything else. I've been getting into the crypto and the real estate and the tarot and stuff like that. But other than that, I just put up for taxes and everything else. I'm just putting up to make more money off of it. Yeah, for me, I save most of it. Like, I'm not highly educated in real estate or crypto yet. I'm just saving most of my money for now, living below my means. That's good. Uh, so for me, I got fucking eight bank accounts. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to, man, like, for me, I got accountants. They give me P&Ls, first day of the month, everything. So I think for me, I'm just very analytical with each and every dollar because each and every dollar counts, right? So for me, you know, if, you know, I get lump sums of checks sometimes and I'm like, uh, you know, don't do that, Ted. You don't need that watch right now. Like, chill out. Um, so one thing for me is, like, when money hits my account, like he said, I take 35% and I throw it into another account. But sometimes, you know, depending on the size of the check, I might take the entire check and throw it in my stock account. And uh, for me, like, I get paid passively to hold, you know, dividend-paying companies. Um, so for me, it's just, you know, I'm paying to save myself in the future. If anything ever were to hit the wall, I'm preparing now. So by the time I'm 30, I have a for sure legacy or a for sure way of knowing that my cost of living is paid for for the rest of life. And uh, for me, I think that's one thing that I utilize in, in my back pocket as like, OK, I'm making this money now, but passively I'm still making something. So at the end of the day, you know, half of my cost of living is paid for right now. I'm only 23 by 25, by 28, by by 30 as long as i keep doing the same thing that i've been doing since 19 until now you know i'm sorry up until i'm 30 i should be set for life by by 25 by 26 by 27 but it's just a it's a it's a it's a it's a game to me you know what i mean like how much money can i invest for the future that will save my time in the future and like for me that's just how i've always been thinking so um again i separate all of my businesses i separate my money from from with it with each other and again you're separating you gotta think i have eight different bank accounts five different businesses so i'm separating 35 percent 35 percent 35 percent i'm throwing into this account this account this account and i'm keeping everything separate but again don't get too tempted by the money that's coming in when you actually doing something for the passion and because you actually love it the money shouldn't be something that changes who you are that's just a bonus so I think those would be my biggest tips to you. But one thing I did want to spot out because um, it, I was just thinking of it before um, before Shaq went. I'm like, every person in here understands a different they, – they understand the fact that you need multiple streams of income. So although we are big in the clothing brand space and we have success in it, like that's not the only thing that we want to do, right? Pretty much all of us said either crypto, real estate, or something of the sort, right? So – what I want you to understand and take away from this video is yes, we have clothing brands and these are our vehicles, but we are taking the money from these vehicles and we're parking it somewhere else that is again going to save us in the future. So I hope that you guys took that gym and take it in and seriously, because again, you, you can build a, a multi-million dollar clothing brand, right? But when you understand margins and profit, you understand that shit. If your numbers don't start elevating immensely, you might not live the lifestyle that you want to live at 50. And that's why other investments and other asset classes um, are so important. So one thing I want to ask y'all, and um, if y'all have questions, y'all can ask me too. But one thing I want to ask y'all is in the clothing brand space, right? How do you like stay unique? Because again, we all have different brands and surprisingly, none of us are like, making the same shit as each other. Like everybody is in their own space and everybody is dominating. And what I've realized is that there's always going to be a person who wants to buy clothes. There's always going to be a person who wants to get fit and, and have their shit on. And there's always people who just want to, you know, rock somebody else's stuff or support their brand. So how do you guys stay unique in the midst of so many clothing brands being brought up now and having some success and, and starting to be, you know, innovative and being creative? So um, that would be a question I would have for y'all. We start off with your chat. Oh. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, you stay unique by, for one, if you started a clothing brand, if you sort of started it because you never loved clothing. Uh, no other reason. I don't, I don't think you should be here. No other reason you want to start a clothing brand. <laughs> no. I mean, inspiration is cool, but if you got that love for clothing, when it comes to designing or just coming with your pieces, it should be coming off your mind, not from what you like seeing, just from what you picture in your, in your head. So once you figure out your audience, what they like, that kind of give you another, you know, lane towards what you're trying to create. It, it, it's just, it's like, I can't really put it into words, but like being unique, just like coming from your love or what you're doing for real. Like, that's how I come, come up with most of my designs. Mm -hmm. So we know, no, we're about to create these days. Same here, I got like over 150 designs in the vault that I just make like on my free time. Um, but I definitely get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest. Like, I, I like to look up like 70s looks and things like that. And I like to bring it back and, you know, put my own spin on it. But definitely Pinterest and just, you know, my own creative design, you know, fire, fire. About I see it. that. Um, I definitely can agree with them on that. Like, if you have a passion for it, I feel like things just click with you. Like, it just clicks, you know what I'm saying? For me, um, when I, sometimes when I have those little like lows and things change, like, you know, when you have that high, like you said, and numbers start to change, what I start doing is I start thinking of what has somebody not done yet in this fashion game? And I pretty much will create a product that, that kind of like is like new to like, you know, the community, like maybe like people that follow me, they probably haven't seen it before. And I just try to create something that's like unique enough to like make something like, wow, like double tap, reshare kind of thing, you know? And that's pretty much how I kind of stay unique in my way. I don't really have a lane, like I'm not, I'm not just a luxury brand, you know, I have, I make so many different products um, to just be unique in different ways. So that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. I think for us it's a little different cause like you guys are like fashion, you know, like high, high fashion and stuff like that. But for us it's more so like we were unique by diving really deep into our niche. So it was like nobody was, nobody was making anything that looked decently wearable for like college kids. So we were like, okay, that's what we're gonna do. So we just kind of took our own creativity and threw it on a pre-existing marketplace that wasn't making good stuff. And then we just kind of stayed consistent with it. And that's a, that's a, like, I was thinking about that when you said that earlier, Ted, like about staying consistent. Mm -hmm. Someone was asking me the other day, like, you know, how, how did you become successful? And I was like, I did the same thing for eight years straight. Right. That's, there's the, that's the cheat code, consistency. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we back at it again. Make sure you guys, again, make sure you follow. Um, not follow, subscribe, right? Like, comment down below if you guys want more videos like this. I would definitely like to bring on more clothing brand owners in this space. Again, this is a legendary, uh, you know, podcast slash interview slash just straight game for YouTube. So if y'all would like more things like this, y'all want me to bring certain people back, comment down below who was your favorite and whatever, and just uh, stir up the conversations down below because, you know, we all got fans. So I would like to see whose fans is battling who fans. So uh, we just going to throw that out there. But <laughs> to segue, <laughs> y'all know I'm a fool, to segue into the next thing, right? So how do y'all deal with anxiety as a clothing brand owner? Because there's going to be some people who are watching this who are already seeing success. And I know for a fact, for me, there's been times I almost folded. So, like, what are some tips for y'all? Because I'm actually interested in hearing it from y'all as well. What are things that y'all do to get over those super anxious points because we're human? And I would like to hear that. And I would like for them to hear it as well. Yeah, sure. Um, you looked at me, so I figured you wanted to. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I think... I think the biggest like tip around anxiety for me is like I had to frame, reframe my thought process on anxiety in general because we're humans so I don't understand why people don't think that we're going to have anxiety in general anyways. So it's actually just very natural to have and then I also realized that like every time that I had anxiety and every time that I had to have a difficult conversation, fire an employee, have a difficult conversation in general with a partner or whatever, I got, I became a better person on the other side of it. So now, whenever I'm greeted with anxiety or different conversations, I actually like run towards them because I know on the other side, I'm gonna become a better person. So now if I ever get anxious, overwhelmed or whatever, I turn it more into like excitement because I know that I'm gonna be getting stronger on the other side of it. So I guess instead of just like trying to deal with anxiety, I just realize it's natural. It's a part of the human experience and I choose what I give meaning to. And I chose to give it the meaning of being excited about it rather than being upset. Mm -hmm. 
Anxiety. Um, for me, anxiety. I, I have really bad anxiety. Like since I was in like tenth grade, I have horrible anxiety. So now when it comes to business, um, any little change in my business, you know, makes me like not sleep. I don't eat for like probably a day until I fix it or figure out what's wrong. And that's really actually really bad. So. For me, I had to realize after talking to like my family and stuff, I had to realize what am I having anxiety about? Am I going to die? Like, what is the real issue? And I have to assess the realistic issue here. Why am I having this anxiety? And how do I deal with it? How do I go about it? I always understand that I'm blessed. I try to think of it as I'm blessed, even though there's a little change in my business. That doesn't mean that my business is going to die tomorrow. But I have such bad anxiety that I just don't understand it sometimes. So I had to start really, I had to start being like really like. Uh, realistic with it like what's the issue and if, if I'm not gonna if it's not gonna kill me then why am I so stressed out about it I, I just figure out how can I you know relax myself I just go walk in nature put my phone down understand that it's not gonna kill me and that's pretty much how I handle my anxiety now yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much have my advice about finding something else away from the clothing that I still love to do so like me, I'm a family guy. So like I'm big on family. So anytime I'm like over overwhelmed, over stressed, probably call my mom or go see my mom or something like that. And just that feeling of just knowing that this is how it used to be ten years ago or five years ago, just being in a house with your family, they put your mind at ease for me. Or I don't know, whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah, keep, one thing I want us to do is just keep it a thousand, keep, keep it a hundred. Yeah. Know, or, you know, I'm, you know, do my little thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you burn it right. You get it. You know, hey, but pretty much just, you know, find something to put your mind at ease, you know. Finding hobbies, don't get away from hobbies. A lot of people' biggest problem is they turn a hobby into a business too fast, mm -hmm. and you start to lose the love for it. But what I like to do is like make sure I still keep a hobby as a hobby, and do that yeah, hobby as, yeah. as much as possible. Right. What about you? Reece? So for me, anxiety really starts with like negative thoughts. I try to combat them with more positive thoughts, and I just heavily got into meditation. So I've been meditating a lot lately, and I smoke a lot of weed. So that definitely helps. Yeah, yeah. At least you're keeping it hundred. <laughs> At least you're keeping it hundred. Um, I think for me, man, I was I was facing a lot of different moments where I just was like, "Yo, it's just it's overbearing." And one thing I did is I just I started asking myself, like, you know, how bad do you want to get to where you're trying to get to, and also being open-minded enough to realize that this is what it comes with it right like this is the challenge that you have to endure there is no person on this planet who is a big significant figure that you look up to that hasn't gone through everything that you've been through and even bigger right um so one thing one thing that i do is i start realizing like okay whatever little issue that's giving me anxiety i start asking myself like is it really that big of a deal right like is it really something where like i start thinking like is my you know is my daughter hurt right now is my mom about to die? Is like somebody in the hospital that I love? Okay, no. So that brings it down a little bit. The next question is, am I fucking completely broke? Do I Can I not pay my bills next month? Okay, it's not that. All right, cool. What's the next thing? Is my best friend on his deathbed or, you know, whatever situation? So I start thinking of the worst of the worst outcomes. And then if it's not that, it lowers it just a little bit. And then what I do is I kill the rest of it by going to the gym. And I start replacing the feeling of anxiousness with the feeling of gratitude to be even in the gym because I started realizing there are people in the world who don't have arms, who don't have legs, who don't have a body to work with, a functioning body. So one thing I do is I just go be grateful for everything that I do have. And although I'm going through an anxious moment, I'm happy that I'm at least going through it through business because some people are so anxious that they won't even start their business. So I'm happy that I even have an anxious moment when it isn't in business because I know, all right, well, once I get over it, I still have a successful business when I get out of it, whether, you know, I feel like folding or not, which is something I'm not going to do. Right. But at the end of the day, that's just my process of thinking. And again, the gym has really been my outlet. You know, what I mean, focusing on a fitness goal, focusing on a mental goal. Like, OK, I need to be reading this much. I need to meditate for this long. How long can I meditate without being interrupted? OK, do I need to put my phone down? If we're being real, 
a lot of us are even having a problem with it now where we can't put our phone down. And I was just talking to Justin about this before we even started recording. It, it's been times where I cannot get off of my phone. And I'm like, yo, like that's definitely a fucking sickness if we're just being honest. Like you not being able to put your phone down for five minutes without your brain, like check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. And it's like, because we're clothing brand owners, because we are, you know, influencers and big people on social media, there's always something that's going on on social media that we just naturally tune into, but you do it for so long to the point where it's like, it becomes a disease now and you don't know how to put it down. So like I went hiking, you know, I like to go swimming. I like to go play basketball. I like to lift. I like to chill with my friends and put my phone down sometimes. So those are some things that I do. Hopefully y'all are able to take all of these things that we just said. And um, again, please just make sure you take it and run with it because i want this this youtube video to be one of the most powerful and you know uh educational videos that you've watched within your time frame on youtube so um again if you can learn something about being anxious then you can take it and run with it and, and, and apply it to any other area of your life because you're going to be anxious no matter what so you might as well just understand how to deal with it and take these bits and parts from each and one of us and just run with it right so the next question i will have for y'all right and we're gonna actually start off with kayla all right what is your biggest back pocket gem that you have for either a new or clothing brand owner who's already uh, seeing some success? Um, so how pretty much my success story mostly comes from me knowing how to market, you know? I feel like marketing is so important. I feel like you could have such a fire product, but if you don't know how to market it correctly, you know, you, you might not get the recognition that it really deserves. Like marketing for me is everything. That's how I got to where I'm at now, which is focusing on marketing. How can I get the right content? How can I get the right, you know, capture, you know, video, whatever it may be. Like that's just that's what I specialize on, like on marketing. Social media marketing, getting attention to your social media. If you can if you want to get attention, I feel like you can sell anything. Attention, like that's pretty much like for me. Like I like to build attention and I like to sell my products. That's exactly how I learn how to market. Find attention, you can sell. You can sell things to people for sure. Facts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna start on this side too. Go ahead. Okay. So for me, it'd be influencer marketing for sure, and then just making as many offers as you possibly can to the likely customer for sure. All right. Cool. Chat. <clears throat> two. I got how to work TikTok. I'm gonna teach you how to start a three account. I'm gonna count number three now. Be at like forty-five thousand. So. Once you start in the clothing brand TikTok or a TikTok just to put out your clothing brand, first thing you want to do is follow 10 people that's doing it on TikTok, what you want to do. Don't start posting videos yet. Just interact with those people, like comment on their videos, August and all that for like a week straight. Then see the videos that they're posting, go to the search bar, type in clothing brand videos, hit the filter, hit the last week option, hit the most like option. See those videos, see what they make, and see how they use in, in, uh, in, input your own clothing into those same formats. Use the same sound that's trending. Give it like two to three weeks. See how your tracks are start to move. Interact with your comments. And then watch how your TikTok go. If it don't blow, DM me on Instagram at Hollywood <laughs> Shack. <laughs> but I guarantee you, if you do that, it's going to work. I just heard a guarantee. He just heard a guarantee. Don't hit me up. Hit him up. <laughs> be up. <laughs> nah, that's a fact though, because that's the video I posted the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that same thing. Like, yeah. You just got to flip the algorithm to it. Working your favorite video. And have you on interacting with the comments. You got to get your favorite video. Got to. Yeah. What would you say? Um, damn, I. Uh, Biggest um, back pocket gem. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be like crazy tactical and like bore folks and stuff. So like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, I think the best thing that you can do if you like really just getting started is like pick one thing and only do that one thing. Um, I think that what I see happen most of the time because I've been in the game for a while is like people come in the game and do something for like three to six months and then like something else attracts them and then they do that for three to six months and something else attracts them and they never truly give themselves the one of the best the biggest assets that we know is time but they never they always fear that they don't have enough time to be successful in the thing that they have but they don't use time as the asset that it is 
and you can actually use time to grow your business as well. So if you just use time in a positive way where you do the same thing for a long period of time, then you inevitably be successful. So I think that one of the biggest tips and that's not like super tactical is like pick one thing that's a high leverage opportunity you that is centered around the skill sets that you have and apply the skill sets to that one opportunity for 10 years and then I guarantee you'll be successful because the issue is that if I gave all y'all a contract right now and said hey sign this contract and you'll have a million dollars in 10 years every single one of us will sign it but most people won't do the same thing for 10 years they just do the same thing for six months and then they never become successful so I'd say like if you're really trying to get to the million dollar mark as if that's a lot of money anyways <laughs> like <laughs> just do one thing <laughs> for a long period of time that's a bar yeah, he talking big numbers. He said, you know, that million ain't really nothing. You know, yeah. 10 M's and up. Uh, no, let me stop. Um, I think the biggest back pocket gem that I have is to focus on the customer base that you already have, right? Um, and this is a gem for the clothing brand owners who already have clothing brands. They're getting some sales or getting some some some, some type of traction, right? Um, <clears throat> that user experience is very important, right? So for me, you know, I made, um, you know, for my Durag brand, one way that I increased our sales a lot and I kept our, you know, retention up when it comes to people who are buying the first time and, and buying over and over again because I, what I realized is if a person buys from you the first time it's a lot easier to sell them something the second time than it is to just get a random lead a random customer off of social media so what I started doing was I started focusing on the branding and the experience that they got when they actually received the package right so when somebody receives a package you get a nice car you might get a handwritten letter and then for me when I had my do-rag brand you know I started watching uh, or I, as a kid I watched a lot of Willy Wonka um, and the chocolate factory they basically had the golden ticket so I literally took the same exact thing and I just, you know, branded it with my brand and it was like, hey, you get this golden ticket. Only a few amount of people ever get this ticket. But in reality, every person got that ticket, but it makes them feel like they were the ones who won. And when you make a customer feel like that, they feel inclined, like they feel like I have a contract with you to, to spend this money with you. And then I use the specific code so I can track how many people this is actually converting. So now what I started looking at is like, OK, well, if I have if I send out all of these and I get 400 orders in a month and I send out all of these to all 400 orders, how many of these people use this code? And if you're just getting an extra 20, an extra 30, those are extra 20, 30 sales that you wouldn't have gotten if you didn't have that one car, if you didn't have that one different little part of it or experience for a person to feel like, wow, this person really cared about me, right? Uh, a handwritten letter can go a long way. And even if you don't want to write it, you can literally go to Vistaprint, you can go type up uh, something, have them write it in cursive or print it in cursive, and then take a little stamp, right? I have one where it has my signature. You stamp every single one of the cards and you send it out. And it's just doing extra things to show your customers that you care. And at the end of the day, that can take your brand a very, very, very long way. And one thing I've noticed with all of them, I shop with all of their brands, they all have unique experiences when you actually receive the product. So that's one thing that I felt like it popped up to my head. And I was like, this is going to be the best one out of all these ones. But uh, that's <laughs> one I wanted to give you all because at the end of the day, it's extremely, extremely important. So again, user experience is very important. All right, y'all. So again, make sure you guys subscribe, like, comment down below, tag a friend, share it with a share it with your cousin who need to know how to build a clothing brand if they want to learn for real, for real, because it's the best place to learn how to do it. Right. So next question I got for you all is manufacturer experiences. Um, I felt like this was one of them funny ones because me and Shaq talked about it. If you haven't checked out our last YouTube video with me and Shaq, make sure you go check it out. It'll be somewhere up here or just go on my YouTube. Make sure you subscribe again and just go watch that video. Um, but manufacturer experiences, for those of you who, who don't understand this, manufacturer is going to give you a headache. That's just regardless of what industry you're in, whether it's just an e-commerce business or a brand or a clothing brand, you're gonna find suppliers and manufacturers who are going to ultimately fuck you over. That's just the reality of it, right? So can y'all tell us your experience or funny story that you had with a manufacturer and how you either got over it or you know lost some money and recovered it? And we'll start with Kayla, because I know you you got you the goat with the, with the, with the manufacturers. <laughs> I was hoping you'd pick Shaq. I heard you got a funny story. <laughs> uh, you know we're gonna, we gonna switch it over to Shaq now. Shaq, Shaq the, the storyteller. Oh, uh, okay. Um, let's go. So take it back to last October. October first, I had did a pre-order for some four zippers for the first time manufacturing. Um, we did a pre-order. Everything went smooth. It was a nice pre-order. I ended up sending him five thousand on the back end. He made the order. Everything came out great. Cool. 
Let's fast forward to October 30th. I wanted to do this same drop again. Let's do another pre-order. But this time, I know how much I wanted to, to uh, sell at the moment. So I went ahead and paid him up front. I trusted him because the first transaction went through very smooth. I had no hiccups with this guy at all. I said, you know what? Let's try doing it up front this time. This is my first time doing a full board. I said, let me just send him the 5000 and we'll see what's going on. Let's skip to like November 15th. He sent me back a, a video like it's being worked on everything like that. I'm not even paying attention to that. This is an old video from the first drop. <laughs> the first. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, he getting it done pretty fast. I'm like, okay, cool. So Black Friday is getting ready to roll around. The order's still getting made. I'm like, ah, my customers want this jacket again because around this time I had, I probably had like ten thousand follower increase in this little period right here. So everybody wanted this one product. So I'm like, mm, keep making it. They want it. Let me try it again on Black Friday. So I redropped on Black Friday. Sent him another five thousand. So now he got ten thousand in. Let's fast forward to December 5th. <laughs> I'm like, yo, uh, those orders from October 30th, how much time we got them? No response. I'm like, okay, cool. They might get a holiday or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can stay quick to have a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do a holiday out there quick. Like, okay, so December 10th, yo. Uh, yo, any any word on that, uh, uh, that order? No response. All right, like I said, bro, I'm calling the police. <laughs> I'm searching government officials. <laughs> I'm like, I need an address. I need some. December 15th, that was my last straw. I started, I'm like calling him over and over again. I'm like calling him. This man sent me an automated message. Sorry, we are not in office at the moment. I'm like, bro, no way. I'm like, nah, nah, this ain't happening right now. <laughs> no, nah, this ain't happening. So, um... So we get to like two days later, he finally sent me a response. He sent me another video, but it's the same video from the last time. I had picked up on it by then. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, so when I'm gonna get the order? No response. Next thing I know, I'm blocked on WhatsApp. I'm oh. like, yo. <laughs> I'm like, yo. So now I'm 10,000 in the hole. All these customers waiting on orders. I'm, you all know how to do a pre order. Everybody got their order. I'm getting email after email after email. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this gonna be in my brain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, this gonna be it. There's nothing I can do at this moment. So I'm like, uh, okay, so I was running up. My old manufacturer did my shorts were starting to be off. I'm like, bro, can you please send me a sample of this jacket the best way possible? He sent it to me, I okayed it. Uh, he ended up giving me a $3,000 discount on the order. So I ended up having to pay $7,000 more out to get those orders sent out. I lost. I lost like 25% of those orders, so I had to pay back like, I think it was like, whew, give me a headache thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I lost so much money. Let's just say all in all, that that one mess up cost me like $23,000. Yeah. No profit. Yeah. $23,000 just gone down the drain. And ever since that day, uh, anytime manufacturer said his name behind me, I just ignore him. <laughs> 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 I don't want to talk about the manufacturer's name behind me until I find out who they were. Oh, yeah, no, see, that's the, one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. I ain't gonna lie, because I got fucked over on the pre orders too. But uh, it ain't as funny as his, though. So, Kayla, what, what, what story you got for us? Um, So, I remember one day, I actually have two. I think one, my favorite manufacturer that we've been working together for like a very long time, since my first product that took off, um, he just woke up one day and he's like, Hi, Kayla, I'm not working with you no more. I'm like, What happened? He's like, He's like, Oh, I'm not working with you no more. And then, like, the next year, another manufacturer I was working with, He's like, I'm coming to Miami. I'm like, okay. He literally comes to Miami. He's like, Kayla, I need you to book me a hotel. I'm like, why would I do that? I'm like, dude, we got the point of hotel six. We got all these hotels. You feel me? Like, you better find one. Like, I don't, like, I don't really know you. Like, he's like, okay, fine. I'm coming to go pick up. I'm coming to pick up the boxing gloves I sent you from your house. I'm like, bro, like, are you serious right now? Like, he was dead ass serious. Like, I'm gonna come to your house, pick up the boxing gloves. So many Yes, <laughs> he didn't come to my house, but he said he was like, oh, like, I need, I, need, I, need, I ship the boxing gloves to your house, so 
I could come pick them up when I come to Miami. I'm like, I don't even know you, but I just stopped answering the phone. Like, you're not about to come over here in Miami to find me. Whoa. I mean, I kept the boxing gloves. I was like, fight my friends. You know what I'm saying? But he never, he never showed up because it's like, I don't, think, I don't even think he understands how to get around here, but it was still like crazy to me that a manufacturer really came to Miami and was like, I need a hotel, pay for my hotel. I'm like, bro, am I your shipping mama? Like, what the hell? I'm like, no. I look on me, it's gonna be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> His name wasn't Muhammad, though. She said it wasn't Muhammad. It was Muhammad. Muhammad. Yeah. If you got a supplier manufacturing name Muhammad, you. All their names are Muhammad, though. Yeah, a lot of them. It's like Muhammad and a different middle name and then their last yeah. name. Yeah, that's true. They all might just be fast. Someone has. Tell them, you can't just pass through this. This guy pulled up. <laughs> he came to Miami for a trip. He's like, oh, I, I usually am in Atlanta sometimes. And then I'm like, okay, that's nice. A year later, like months later, he's like, yeah, I'm coming to Miami. He was really in Miami for real. And he's yes. like, I need a hotel. I'm like, man, that's crazy, man. Yes. <laughs> you know, you like that. Yes. No, that's crazy. Yeah. Man. That's all I know. Hey, my honey, just pull up. He said you want all this money. All right, Justin, what you got for us, bro? Nothing too crazy, bro. Like, I did a bulk order one time. And I still, I did like a, I always do like 50% up front and then 50% upon you sending me a video with a new label on the box, mm-hmm. ready, being ready to take it, be taken out. And then um, I sent them 50%, he never, and then he never came back and said anything. That 50% was like 10 racks. So it was just 10 racks and just gone. Yeah, it was me playing with them wires and that money gram. Man, yeah. boy, yeah. that yeah. money gram. Money gram is the worst. So, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a tip. Always always try to go PayPal first. Mm-hmm. Always try to go PayPal. They're going to lie to you and say that it's illegal in the country, but most of them have a friend that's in America that they'll allow them to use their PayPal account. So if you really pressure them and tell them that how big your brand is, how successful it is, and that you only accept PayPal, they'll find a way to make it happen most of the time. But if not, and you really got to, then you know, Western Union, money grabbing, et cetera, but then just know that you put your bread up on a risk. Yeah, if they don't say PayPal, I won't be in one of them my work. That's like Dollar General to Walmart. Hey, no cap. Hey, like, I need y'all to just be, like, really careful out there when y'all with these manufacturers because, again, we all have different things that we've been through. Um, Reef, you got one for us? Yeah, no, nah, for me, I actually did a pre-order, and um, I recently just moved to Atlanta, and I was, like, a week behind on the pre-order, and I look at the ship, and I'm like, all right, it's about to be here this week. That day comes, it says delivered, and I'm like, it's not here. I look on uh, the DHL, you know, the tracking name for DHL. Yeah. They shipped it to New Jersey, my old address. Yeah, it was it was an apartment. I'm like, I'm not getting that bad. But it's it's not, I didn't it's know it's the contact. It was that, slow, but man, that that on everybody. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I would took that to flight to New Jersey. I was like, <laughs> like, hey, yo, you got my shit. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That happens to me too. But luckily. Somebody that I went to elementary school with moved into my last townhouse, oh, and sick. they were like, "Hey, look, this is your package." I'm like, "Oh God, we're bringing out this so, oh, like, for real, for real." Because there's somebody that I went to school with for years. They moved to the same place as me, and they just we just reconnected like after yeah. high school type yeah, stuff. Like, thank God. She. My look, I don't. I feel like my luck don't be that good, man. Look, my shit be fucked. Um, <laughs> but so I got a question for everybody too, right? When it comes to creating your designs for your brands, like where do you find your inspiration from? Like, you know, a lot of us love dressing or just love clothes, period, right? I'm pretty sure all of us actually. Um, Where do you find your inspiration from when you're coming up with designs? Or if you have somebody else doing it, where do you find the inspiration to have them come up with ideas so they, you know, have some type of idea what what, what the vision is for the brand? Um, And I'll start off with Shaq, because, you know, I know he he the, the goat on the design side. So it might sound crazy, but my design inspiration comes from song lyrics. Song lyrics? Literally song lyrics. I just want to go. Like literally, so uh, I don't know if y'all have heard of an artist called Rallo Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. So I listen to him a lot. So like a lot of his punchlines be like things in the picture. So I take the punchline that he say and I try to bring it to life. Like my last drop with the the lips logos with the white saw Hollywood line, that was a of one of his songs. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yo, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. Let me see how we can ask the brand to like it. I really just, cause I'm big on music. So I listen to a lot of music and I just get inspiration from a lot of lyrics from songs. 
That's fire. fire. I actually was not expecting to hear that. <laughs> was not expecting. That is a huge gem. There you go. Uh, Reef, what about you? Like me, I, I use Canva a lot. I just like to free him on designs. I got this fire designer over in Indonesia. I just send him over like my mock-up and he'll put it all together. Yeah. Oh, oh. Kayla, what about you? Because I know you be dropping shit left and right. I mean, I can relate to Shaq on the lyrics. I, I remember Drake's song was like, we and friends find peace. I made a hoodie. I was like, we and friends find peace. And mm-hmm. whatever. And I was like, that shit was fire. I'm like, that was fire. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, like, play with Cardi. Back then, he used to be into butterflies. So I used to do, like, holographic butterflies on the sleeves. People really like that thing, too. Went viral a couple times on Twitter. And then, um, I like cargo pants a lot, like, like, pockets and stuff. Like, for me, that was what was in, like, it's in like now too. So I like making stuff like that pretty much. So that's where my inspiration comes from. Yeah. Uh, mine kind of just comes from like the, like what I like from the past and what I want to see in the future. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, especially with our brand, like it's really heavily inspired by like Martin and like, a, you know, different world and stuff like that. So I just learned right. in the past of like, what was really cool vintage, big screen prints and like all types of stuff like that. And then I just think of like, if I wanted to recreate something like that, how would I want it to look if I modernized it? And I kind of just flip it in that way. So. Dope. All right, y'all. So we're coming up towards the end of this video. Hopefully you guys uh, were either learned something, you either laughed, you either got inspired. Um, before we end it off, um, can y'all give the people one gem that you wish you would have known in the beginning of your journey or where you're at right now? What gem would you give somebody who is either starting, seeing some success, or even just scaling at the moment? Yeah, <laughs> we gotta start off with the the best gym that's gonna be in the house. <laughs> um, bro, my my head keeps going back to just staying focused on one thing, and the reason I say that is because like I heard a really good quote the other day, and the the quote was, "Wealth is made through concentration, but it's maintained through diversification." And I thought that, that was really interesting because so many people are being told like you gotta have multiple streams of income, which makes sense because one income stream is too close to none, but we know that the best way to secure your job is to be the boss too. So I'm like, okay, all of this makes sense, but it's also contradicting as well. So the way that I think about it now and the way I would say it to the audience, like if you're in this space, be very deep and narrow and concentrated in what you do. And my example is like for a YouTuber. So if I'm a YouTuber, I'm gonna do YouTube only. And then if I'm gonna diversify within YouTube, I'm gonna concentrate and go very deep and be get a lot of subscribers. Then once I've automated that process, then I'll do like YouTube AdSense. Then I'll do like teaching a class on how to do YouTube. Then I'll do like sponsorships for my YouTube channel. But I'm not doing make a lot of money in YouTube. And then I'm like, oh, I'm, now I'm a Toro crypto expert, like real estate guru. Like no, I'm not diversifying in that way. But if I do diversify that way, then I'm partnering with the best in the business in general because I've been able to grow myself a following to network with those types of individuals. So my my advice would be, you know, if your goal is to build wealth, then build it by being very deep and narrow on one thing and then diversifying it. That's how you maintain it. So a bar. What about you? Wow. Well, um, I didn't agree with that. Also, I'd probably say, um, you know, really following your passion. Don't really do things just for money. It's not going to work like that. I realized for me, I was more focused on you know being a creator, and I was really I was really happy to make things that people like enjoyed wearing and felt better wearing about themselves or whatever the case is. Uh, it made me feel like really good about myself that people really wanted my designs. So when you have a passion for what you do, I feel like that's that's like number one. You know, even though if my business takes a turn, like I get nervous of course because I have to out here I have to pay my bills whatever but I still enjoy what I do no matter what to where it's like I don't just give up and say okay let me just go you know go somewhere else try something else you know what I'm saying like I just always I'm always looking for ways to better myself so being consistent and having that passion I feel like that's a huge you know thing for me. Bar. Go ahead Shaq. Know uh, when you need help so um, a lot of people be way too powerful especially if you're starting a bit on your own you want your hand on everything. So you got to know when you need help. If you're scaling high numbers, you definitely can't be doing it by yourself. That's gonna come with a lot of work, uh, packing, shipping, keeping up inventory, keeping the designs going, all this. And if you do get help, don't just get help. Make sure you're getting help from people that actually 
know what they're doing in these certain areas. Like if you're gonna get somebody to help you with packaging and shipping, make sure they have something they did dealing with inventory back in their time or something, you know. Don't just put anybody on the team. Facts. Mm -hmm. Major. Yeah, so for me, I wanna say it doesn't matter how long it takes, just keep moving. Like no reward comes from stagnation. Just keep your foot on the gas. That's all I got. Uh, I think to end it off, I would definitely say just stay pure with your intentions and why you're doing certain things um, and just remember your why. You know what I mean? There's going to be times where, you know, you go get tested. And at the end of the day, that's what you should embrace, the test. The test is what creates the character. So at the end of the day, you know, depending on who you want to be at the end of, you know, whatever rainbow or that you, you know, following or whatever, just remember that type of person that you want to become is never going to be that person until you go through the trials and tribulations and you win them um so just don't fold don't bend don't don't you know give up at the first sight of you know something in your way right um and again stay pure with your intentions and like i said remember your why who you're doing it for why you're doing it you know as long as you keep that number one and you don't let money be the thing that keeps you going because at the end of the day that will always be your destruction at the end of the day when the money is the only thing you're focused on when the money goes and when you make so much money you start losing satisfaction for what you're doing and that's when you start falling off so those would be the top tips that i would have um i greatly appreciate all of you guys for even coming on here um we at the crib right now in the palace land or the promised land actually shout out to rick ross um but at the end of the day i just wanted to you know bring it uh, again bring together some of the biggest clothing brand owners in the game um, again, I really, really want you guys to go into the description and follow all of them. Make sure y'all shop with all of their brands. Everything is going to be in the description. Um, this video was sponsored by Limitless Investments. We are the number one clothing brand server in the world. So if you want to come in there and learn from all of them, they're actually all in the server. So it's pretty dope to even have this. And I just thought about it at the end. I'm like, damn, all of them are actually in the server. But if you want to learn from people who are actually doing it, be networking with people, six, seven figure business owners, get feedback on your designs, learn how to build your website, learn how to actually start, get classes, stock trading, sports betting every day. Um, at the end of the day, Limitless is the place to be. So we greatly appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, comment down below. Uh, if you found something funny or anything you want to engage with us with, um, we'll make sure that we respond in the comments below. And uh, just share this with a friend because it definitely helps the page grow. And uh, I just I, I thank you all so much. And um, that's it for the video. Peace out.